when you're waiting for it, spring is slow to arrive in my hometown in southernmost Maine. You can feel the anticipation in our backyard, which stretches to include our local school, Central Elementary. And a great way to use our anticipation of spring is to celebrate the new growth that is the heart of it. That's just what local chef and cookbook author Kathy Gunst has done, not just this spring, but throughout the past year. And last June, I was invited to the White House um, as part of Michelle Obama's Let's Move initiative, and I was one of 900 chefs that sat out in front of the Rose Garden. And I thought I was there as a journalist. And by the end of the weekend, I was so convinced about everything Michelle Obama was saying about how it has to be a grassroots effort in order to fight obesity, in order to teach kids about fresh food instead of frozen and plastic food. And I came home and I thought, I'm going to go to Central School. I'm going to adopt them. But we were warned there would be lots of problems and everyone would say no. But I called Principal Vicki Stewart and all she did was say yes. She was just amazing. She's like, yes, 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 I want to do this. Yeah, and this is a very exciting event. It is current. really cool. It's very cool. Yeah. I have been here teaching every single class from pre-K up to third grade. We've done nutrition games, we've done cooking classes, I've had famous Seacoast chefs come in. Evan Mallett from the Black Trumpet came and we made spinach pasta and beet pasta and we made fresh spinach topping and the kids lined up and they actually held their plates out and said, more spinach please. The kids were really turning on to fresh vegetables. Today's really exciting. We're gonna have 400 kids planting seeds. I'm John Forty, I'm curator of historic landscape over at Strawberry Bank, but I'm a neighbor and a community member. Um, Kathy Gunst and I have worked together. I started Slow Food Seacoast, and I like to pair up history, science, social studies, and really help affect changes that get kids outdoors, help them think about gardening as something that the, it's part of their skill set that nature's a place they can be comfortable, so we came to do a seed planting today. I'm so ex I'm overwhelmed. I'm really hoping I don't get emotional. That will not be good, <laughs> but it is emotional. It's so great. It's just thrilling. There's so many kids. <laughs> we are so excited. If you could help me out and get into your great audience position, remember that means sitting so you're balanced. We have some very special guests. Most of you already know. Thumb in the air if you've done something in school with Mrs. Guns. Just a thumb up high. Maybe you cooked pancakes, maybe you made smoothies, maybe you've seen her talking in the gym about the Hoop House project. She is becoming a famous <laughs> member of a Central School, and she brought a special friend today, and I, I don't hear this word very often, but John Forte, Mr. Forte, is a master gardener. Mrs. Gunst and Mr. Forte, come right up, please. We've been talking about gardening and the hoop house since, do you remember last fall when you first got to school and I said, we're going to have a garden, we're going to have a hoop house, and you're like, where is it? When are we doing it? Well, we're starting today. It's still too cold outside to put tiny seeds in the ground and make plants, so we're going to start them inside, and when you're done planting at the end of the day, you're going to bring them back to your classroom or to someone else's classroom that has lots of sun. Who knows what plants need to grow? Within our own historical memory, there were victory gardens that at the height of their success gave the nation nearly half of its produce. Just people growing in their backyards, saving seeds, canning. When Michelle Obama started the new organic victory garden on the White House lawn, it was an initiative to say to kids, it's time to get outside, it's time to reacquaint yourself with what a vegetable is, how to grow it. You hear what type of spinach it's called? Giganti di inverno. That sounds exotic. It means it's big, big leaves. Uh, because of your tall tales, you're planting two seeds. Can you guess what they are? Turn up some beets. Planting the seeds. Planting the seeds for the next generation. We were just talking earlier about this the recent studies that are showing that kids on average know less than 10 animals and plants in their own backyard, but over a thousand corporate logos. And 
all of us as educators and parents, I think, need to do a better job getting our kids connected up to the outdoors. Mrs. Hoyt's class is going to plant kale. We need passion from parents and teachers who are committed to teaching principles that are important in the way we eat, the way we live, but I also see it turning into a mainstream way of life. I never thought I'd see year-round farmers markets in our own community in my own lifetime. It's a great change that's underfoot. One woman was volunteering in the classroom and I turned around, she was helping me, and she started crying. And I said, what's going on? She's like, my kid's drinking the smoothie. And I said, of course your kid's drinking the smoothie. And she said, no, my kid doesn't drink smoothies. He's got a thing about textures and he doesn't like fruit. And I said, he made it. He made it with his peers, so of course he's gonna eat it and he's gonna drink it and he's gonna love it. And she was so touched and it was a real lesson in how we have come to learn in the United States that kids will only eat five or six things. It's one of the great myths of food in this country. Oh, kids only eat pizza and chicken nuggets. Well, they don't. If you invite them to grow food and cook food, they'll eat anything. Gentlemen, what are you planting? Kale. And how deep are you supposed to?